Welcome to our presentation. Today, we're going to talk about lean in organizations and the supply chain. We will first briefly explain the concept of lean, and afterwards, we will provide you with the analysis of the articles by Womack, written in 1994, and Heinz in 2004. So before we start analyzing the articles, we will briefly touch upon the concept of lean. Lean aims at increasing customer value while using fewer resources. The main aspects of lean are that it aims at eliminating waste, such as man hours or transportation time, in an organization. Furthermore, in order to increase the positive effects of lean, all the steps in all the activities need to be aligned so that the materials move in a continuous flow. Moreover, the labor should be organized into cross-functional teams while the whole organization is continuously looking for improving the current situation. When the lean thinking is applied in organizations, the main effects will be increased flexibility and better responsiveness in changing customer demand and reduced costs. This should all increase the customer value. Womack and Jones tried to take the discussion of lean further by not including only one company in the concept of lean, but speaking of lean enterprises instead. They mean that supply chains should organize themselves as operationally synchronized. However, this lean enterprise is very difficult to obtain. There has to be a focus on the performance of the enterprise and its total value in the stream instead of individual performance. This is often a lot of, there is often a lot of assistance from the employees as they have differing needs. It's important to understand these needs to be able to form a lean enterprise. Womack and Jones first explained the different needs and cultures that we discussed before. Secondly, they briefly explained why these needs cause challenges on the way of becoming a lean enterprise. After that, they provide a step-by-step -step instruction on how the challenges can be overcome and how an organization can become a lean enterprise. The article doesn't conduct or quote any research data. In our opinion, the paper can be specified as a descriptive review. However, Wombeck, Womack and Jones were pioneers in the field of lean enterprise. So what are the steps? to become a lean enterprise. In order to make individuals gain process perspective and take the bigger picture into account, Heinz et al. suggest alternating career path. Functions should become schools. That means that functions should share their knowledge and develop best practices. A sharper focus for companies means that single companies should focus on their best practices. The entities within a value chain should agree on a code of behavior that should be transparent to everyone. Furthermore, companies should include lean into the cure of their strategy to be really efficient. As companies increase efficiency, layoffs become unavoidable. Nevertheless, companies should avoid mass layoffs to restore the balance of needs. By increasing sales, The main problem that is discussed in the article is that a framework for understanding the implementation of lean as a concept is missing. Therefore, the article wants to answer the first research question on the history of lean and the second research question on the criticism that lean has received over time. Furthermore, the other problems it discusses are that the historic focus of lean is too much on cost reductions and should nowadays focus more on increasing customer value. Also, the problem of a lack of contingency can put the company at risk and leads to the inflexibility of companies. Moreover, the authors discuss the linkage Lean has with organizational learning as to increase this lack of contingency. As the article is published in the Journal of Operations and Production Management, 
The main audience of the article are academics. The paper can be specified as a research review. The article is structured in the following way. Firstly, a historical timeline is given, after which the criticism that was discussed in the problems mentioned before is outlined. Moreover, the learning steps to evolve as a Lean company are elaborated upon linked to the process of evolving as a learning organization. Finally, the future outlook of Lean is provided. So what is the input of this article? Lean exists at two levels, strategic and operational. Then, customer-centered strategy applies everywhere, whereas the operational tools that Lean provides do not. They only apply to companies' shop floor. Then the second point is that Lean has evolved from a pure cost and waste reduction focus to a value-creating focus. This is not very acknowledged by critics. Lean is not applied only in flop stores anymore. It focuses on creating value for the customer, looking at his needs. The author emphasized the need for an increased contingency in Lean. It must look at many contingent factors as size, sector, industrial dynamics, and technology deployed. Companies should use a range of tools from different management approaches as Lean, Six Sigma, marketing, agile manufacturing, etc. Finally, most companies fail to think about Lean for the whole supply chain but the value stream must be seen as a whole. The articles both explain similar concepts as they discuss the concept of lean in supply chains or value streams. Also, they agree that having a mindset of lean throughout, throughout the value stream is needed to create the highest customer value. Furthermore, creating this customer value is crucial in your understanding of lean, as it has evolved from a pure waste and cost reduction focus to include the needed increase of customer value. Finally, the authors both mention that Lean should be embedded in the strategy of the Lean Enterprise or the so-called value stream in order to achieve the highest customer value.